Dr. Casper here, and welcome to The Political Scientist. Dallas Tuck says he is an expert in matters foreign affairs, and he's going to help us dig into some of the top stories that have made headlines this week across the globe. And we're going to kick this off with the ongoing debate in Africa here in Kenya, and that has to do with food security and the safety of GMOs. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Casper. If you can hear me, what's your take on that debate? Um, that debate covers two things. Uh, one is political. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other, of course, is food security. Uh, GMOs are not trusted only in Africa, but across the world. And a lot of it, uh, by science, some scientists say this is a matter of lack of knowledge uh, by the public. On the other hand, uh, the public does not want to put itself in a worse situation. And so, uh, the, there are food scientists who are trying to spread the information out there that uh, this will not necessarily harmful and that they have a good grasp on the technology uh, GMOs. However, uh, especially in countries that have been able, uh, like Kenya, to stay off uh, certain grains, they want to remain that way and not risk the chance of uh, this new type of uh, food technology that uh, many don't feel has been tested yet. Right. And, you know, the, uh, it's great that you pointed out there's a political aspect and also there is the fact that it is a necessity or could be a necessity. Um, we had yesterday Kalonzo Msioka, one of our politicians, saying that this is something that could cause cancer. But then I have also spoken to scientists who say that uh, GMOs are actually, they could swear by GMOs, they're actually safe and tested. So, but with the ongoing situation in food secu insecurity in the Horn of Africa, can we even afford to be splitting hairs and nitpicking when it comes to the food that people can be given? Um, it, and that depends on which country. Now, of course, we have um, some countries in, in the Horn of Africa that desperately need this type of food. And the challenge is when you have, of course, uh, places like Kenya, where there is a good farming culture, agriculture is something that Kenya strives to improve on. Uh, and so when it comes to countries, they, you know, in the emergency phase, people can say bring GMOs. But there's a key thing here. Once you introduce the grains on the ground, mm -hmm. they will eventually get mixed with, with other crop. And at that point, you can, you, your, your, your whole, you know, the problem is to, your whole system becomes ingrained with that crop. And so uh, it's, a, it's a very political and sensitive situation because once you are, are accept it, you, it, many times in this case, there is no going backward. Yeah. Uh, and, so, uh, and so this is the challenge now, okay? So it's between food security and really the long-term risks. And so the, the debate here will be between, number one, lack of knowledge and information, because as we, as we have seen, it, it's turned so political yeah. that it's become partisan. We cannot tell who is telling us the truth. So that makes people anxious about the situation in the first place. And so um, this is, again, until people feel comfortable and to know who to trust from the information uh, and the fact that politics, when politicians start talking about such things, you know there is something behind mm -hmm. this thing. So uh, that uh, either they're really trying to uh, protect something uh, from coming in for particular financial interests or personal interests. And so uh, unfortunately, when something touches politics, it's no longer neutral. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, perhaps you could give us an example from where you're in the United States. What is the state of GMOs there and how is it um, in terms of ensuring that people get sufficient food? Is it accepted? Is it something that is approved? Is it just a matter of stamping the food product and making people aware mm -hmm. what they're buying? What's the situation in the United States? Um, in the United States, of course, it's not like Europe. The United States is a little bit more open. Yeah. Um, uh, compared to other places because a lot of the technologies also come from uh, this part of the world and in the long term the companies from this part of the world will be the ones who benefit because they're the ones who own the, that, that, that food technology. Uh, so in America it's really about labeling. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that comes down to government controls. And so uh, when you, you, you would have to create a whole system where every single type of food has to be labeled. Yes. Uh, food with GMO would have the labeling, food without GMO would not. Now the challenge is uh, for those who are trying now, once GMO takes over, that becomes the common. All right. And right. so if you're trying to have food that doesn't have GMO, you have to pay a, pay a premium because now somebody has to go and do everything within their power to use grains that don't have GMOs and to actually protect their farm from, um, uh, it, it's actually a very taxing problem to mm -hmm. try and uh, to create uh, a reversal once the whole system has GMOs. Right. So, that's the current state over here and it's a state where other countries know once you accept it mm -hmm. it's very hard to go back there's no way there's it's uh, there's almost no way of going back right so of course we shall be following up on that as it develops that conversation and that debate but also there's another conversation that has been rife this week and that has to do with the peacekeeping efforts being made and the drc and of course we do know that the drc was incorporated into the east african community and the motivation behind kenya getting involved is to ensure and many other African uh, uh, East African countries is to ensure that we are incorporating them economically and boosting our prospects what do you make of the latest that has been happening in that part of the continent well DRC continues to be a very complex issue and a very complex conflict um, you know just recently the m23 rep um, uh, attack government and so is between see Rwanda, Uganda and ethnic because we're finding that this the uh, M20 majority who should see that. We seem to be having a problem with our network. We shall try and get Dr. Kasper and Juguna later on. But let's uh, take a look at this a story that is coming from China. Attention gripped China's Foxconn iPhone plant after hundreds of workers clashed with security following a dangerous building frustration with uh, dangerous building of frustration with the con following the country's ultra.